Okay, this is Inquisition Unknown, question mark. I am Stephen Murray, your host. This is Season 2, Episode... I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Season 1, Episode 2, here on the Deep End Broadcasting Network. Joining us shortly will be Eric Miller, construction and building expert. We had some audio issues, so this is officially take number two of this episode. But I think we have everything under control, finally. Um, But our topic of tonight is this. The ancient stones of the giant megalithic sites that scatter this world. We're talking about Baalbek. We're talking about the obelisk of Axiom. We're talking about the pyramids of Giza, Gobekli Tepe, Nayanmadal, Machu Picchu, Puma Punka, Easter Island, Teotihuacan, Nayanmadal, if I didn't say that one, uh, Stonehenge, all of these ancient sites have the construction of these giant stones weighing several tons. Okay, this is going to be our expert on the subject. Okay, Eric Miller, is this you? All right, great to have you aboard again. All right, we're going to start from scratch. I'm glad I didn't realize that uh, everything happening there at the... um, uh, the last interview there at the very end, I was able to catch it just a couple questions in. But let's start from this from scratch. Uh, again, we're talking about the building blocks, literally, of these ancient sites that scatter the planet. Um, Baalbek, Nanmadal, uh, Machu Picchu, the Great Pyramids of Giza, just to name a few. Uh, all of these constructed with stones weighing anywhere from a couple of tons. Uh, up to 700 tons in some cases or more. Um, first off, again, in your business, which uh, you have built several uh, athletic uh, facilities for universities, um, why is this a controversial topic, the movement of giant stones that no one really has any kind of real rationale of how they could actually have been done. So I want to get to, again, for the lack of a better term, pyramid. I want to, I want to start with some small stones and, um, going up to bigger stones. But again, um, I want to get to the, the rope. I mean, 
was rope just readily available and just kind of made back then? What what would people even make rope of? And I understand you're a building expert, not a not a rope expert, but I've seen a giant. Um, um, you know, I've seen chain break under stress, right? So, what kind of rope could have been constructed back then to kind of help move some of these bigger stones? We'll say not even the giant ones, just uh, an above average big stone. Mm -hmm. You can't build a really strong copper chain. Copper's not a, a strong metal. It deforms pretty easily. Um, I, that, that's an excellent question. I don't know. I would imagine you play like papyrus or something like that. It seems like they have a lot of papyrus around there. I don't know. Um, and uh, we talked about rolling stones as well. Uh, you know, rollers being um, a possible way to move stones. But tell me how, why that doesn't work. So a lot of these places are built, well, okay, we'll take the Great Pyramids of Giza, for example. Anywhere from two and a half tons to 14 tons or so is the, your average block stone for the Pyramid of Giza. So, yes. Like nine million pounds, right? 
and that fact could move, but it moved in an incredibly slow way, and it was highly specialized. It wasn't something that is being used on a mass scale. This would be necessary to build like the pyramid. You would need something that would be ongoing for years and years and years to operate on a regular basis. And the closest thing we see to that are probably these dump trucks and rock boys that are the biggest dump trucks I know of. And they, I think, carry like 400 tons, like maybe 500, which still doesn't fit what some of these other stones are carrying. And that's what, that's the peak of modern technology. If you were to float a, a stone down the river that weighs um, anywhere from two tons up to, um, let's say, five tons, how would you float that down the river and then move it across the sand? Well, to float it down the river, you have to have it in a you know, boat, the craft that it would be floating in, would have to essentially displace the, you know, the, the amount of water equal to the weight of the stone it's, it's carrying, right? So they would have to build a class that would displace the water that's equal to the weight of the stone. And I have to have the amount of water that that would have to be. Um, and I mean, the closest thing we need is that of all the things that they would have to do is Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was um, uh, I, I had a slight audio technical difficulty again, but but I think I actually have you good now. One of the viewers said you're coming in a little low and scrambled, and I had a computer uh, reboot too, and I think that's the the main issue is that it kicks me out of all my previous audio settings once it updates. So I need to go back through and check all the boxes, but I think I have them for the most part checked off now pretty good. Anyway, I got a little echo from my microphone coming back, but um, do you hear me loud? Do, do you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I think you definitely sound better on the um, on the phone as well. I just kind of took a sample. Okay, um, so like, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how else you would do it. And then you have to get it out on the other side, too. I mean, that, that, now you're talking about like a lever system with some type of crane where you're able to provide enough weight at one end of it and enough um, you know, mechanical advantage through the lever to where you can compensate for that weight. Say you can do that. Say you have these structures that are strong enough to support it, support that weight, and lift it up and move it. Yeah, then you're on the sand, right? So now you're trying to roll something across sand, which just doesn't work, right? Yes. Um, now, I guess there is the possibility that back when these things were built, maybe there wasn't sand there. Right, you know, the, right, right, right. You know, the, like the sphinx, right, with the water mm -hmm. on the sphinx, had to happen over a hundred years. I obviously, well, like the, the you know, the established theory wouldn't wouldn't say would say that the sinks were built when the when it was still desert. But obviously there's water erosion on there. Um, you know, specialist scientists, you know, uh, ecologists have seen it and like that's obviously water erosion. Um, so that had to happen when the, that area was fertile, right? It was it was uh, it wasn't desert. So maybe the situation was different then. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, is it any easier to roll it across, uh, you know, Fort Dirt or uh, you're, you're, still, you're still faced with just an enormous amount of weight getting rolled over logs and getting pulled with manual labor. And that's just assuming that it's relatively flat, right? Like, you know, we, we've, all, we've all run out of gas or had to push a dead car um, by ourselves or with some friends. And there's a... A massive difference from pushing a vehicle on flat on flat 
becomes extremely difficult. You got to get a bunch of people on it. And vehicles weigh what the other three thousand pounds, and that highly efficient uh, wheel, right? You know, very low friction wheels that are the you know pinnacle of of modern design and making that wheel move as freely as, as possible. And it's still remarkably difficult. But what do you, what do you do when it's a hundred thousand tons or a hundred tons, right? Um, it's a whole different story. And then you have that's just Egypt. Then you have places, you know, like in South America, like Pumabuka, where maybe the blocks aren't that large, but these blocks are getting moved like over mountains. And now, man, I mean, that, that, that's that completely, that's at another level, because now you're not able, you can't roll something up a mountain, right? It, it, it's going to have to be carried in some way, shape, or form. And, uh, and it's the scale at which they're doing it. It's, um, like, I don't know what they figured the pyramids took, I don't know, what, 50, 100 years to build? I mean, that, that's a lot of work. They say it would take um, 20 years right now to build. For, but, well, well it, no, no, it took 20 years for modern day technology to build. I actually had that on the list with, and I have a picture up on the screen now of some of the intricate cut stones. 
I mean, you see these things cut into like um, L-shaped grooves. It's not even like a perfect L. It's kind of like a, uh, you know, it's not, the L won't be going straight up at 90 degrees. It's more or less at an 85 degree kind of um, uh, ascension of the cut. But then it's fitted together with another stone that has that, that exact same like 85 degree cut to where it fits perfectly. And then that stone itself, um, you know, rises into three different layers to fit, uh, you know, the three stones above it. Um, it really is perplexing how they can cut the stones or how these stones are cut, whoever cut them, um, how these stones are cut. But let's face it. I mean, it is a technology really that we don't know, do we? Yes. Yeah. Well, how about this? We we have we have um, buildings. I mean, they are buildings. They are um, facilities cut out of the rock themselves, with like windows almost perfect, uh, literally in the sides of mountain tops. And you have them all over the world at some of these ancient sites where they have just basically have built structures straight into the mountain as one rock. Yep. Right. Well, I mean, we have them in the United States too, in Arizona and New Mexico, right? Thank you. 
mean, even like the, you know, what the function of the pyramid, that's in question, right? Right, like, yes, yes, yes. The, the common belief was that if they were doomed, now they were all like, well, they probably weren't doomed because all the kings were buried in the valley of the kings. Yes, yes, yep. Um, yep. And so, like, what were these things really, you know? Um, even the way, like, the, the great pyramids, the great pyramids are easy, but even the way they're laid out, you know, I mean, they're, they're laid out, when you look at it from above, the, um, they, they, they match the golden section spiral, like the, the Nautilus, that you would see, which is, um, you know, they call it the, the, the golden ratio. It's this, you know, very special geometry that, that exists in the world, and they were able to recognize enough to where they're able to lay these things out in along the lines of, of, of a golden spiral where really it's only observable from the sky, right? And I think that's when you start thinking about, you know, oh, they, they definitely couldn't get up in the sky to look at it, so why else would they be making something that you could see from the sky, right? And then you start getting into speculation about, you know, other, other technologies from other worlds and, and stuff like that, which is well, okay, so the coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza are the same as the um, exact speed of light. 29.9792458 north longitude, and the speed of light is 299,792,458, um, um, what is it, milliseconds? Is that how it goes, I guess, MS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, the exact um, formation of the Pyramid of Giza, too, is uh, the face is direct due north. The, the bottom face is direct due south. But, yeah, it, it, it's exactly um, that kind of thing where, I mean, that's that's beyond coincidence. That has to be, right? <laughs> Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, I think the absolute absolutely, um, and yeah, there is thought of there could have been civilizations here hundreds of thousands of years ago that we just don't know about. Literally, it's could have recycled a few times by now. Um, let's see, the most extreme. Now there's heavy stones everywhere, and, and you know a 700 ton stone at Ballback is i mean that's as inconceivable as it gets but but let's talk about let's talk about this nan madal are you familiar with nan madal no, nan, nan madal is in the um micronesia in the pacific ocean um you, you know i can't say it's close to easter island but it's in that neck of the woods of the of the pacific triangle between new zealand uh hawaii etc cetera, etc cetera. Yes, 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 yes. And Nan Madal, um, now only 40% of the, 
of the rock has come from the island. The other 60%, they can't account for where it came from. But um, uh, they have they have stones weighing, you know, 70 to 100 tons, basically. And um, they were quarried from the top of a mountain and transported across the island. Um, so let me ask you this. If I am, um, you know, the ancient tribal chief of Nan Madal, and you are my, um, I don't know, general or, or however, however that would work. And I asked you that we need to make a new building. You know, let's, let's, let's take everybody. Okay, let's take everyone. And we're going to go to the top of the, this mountain over here. And we're going to uh, extract uh, some 50, 70, 100 ton stones. And we're going to move it uh, uh, down the mountain and over here to this facility across water, too. I mean, there's all kinds of water you would have to cross, um, um, yeah. et cetera. What would you do? What you're getting them on, you're getting them all and off. I mean, it would just all have to be, it would all be limited to the, the strength of material. Like, you could build a lever or crane that could lift as much weight as you needed lifted, as long as the material was good to support it, right? So, like, you know, a, a lever cane, crane, crane being like, imagine a, a, a seesaw, right? Mm -hmm. you take a Do you know what the payload? Do you know Do you know what the payload is for a helicopter um, to uh, carry something by strap underneath it? Around around twenty thousand pounds is a helicopter. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so basically 10 tons, T 10 tons we can, uh, mankind can fly uh, through the air dangling below it. But okay, go ahead, Eric, with what you're saying. I'm sorry. And that's probably, what type of helicopter is that? Is that like that sky train? Yeah, yes, yep. Like no. Even that, that's a highly specialized piece of equipment. Right. Yeah, that's not your average helicopter, right? That thing is crazy looking. Right, right, yep, yep, correct. Um, let's see here. Payload for a barge. Do you know how much your modern day barge can, can carry? Wait, why? Wait, why? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Let's see, uh, 400 metric tons of cargo. Yeah, 400 metric tons of cargo. Dry bulk ship, cargo ships can carry as much as 200,000 tons. But that's a, that's a giant, yeah, that's a giant cargo ship. <laughs> There's nothing like that back then. Uh, let's see, a, a barge weight capacity, this unit uh, equals 2,000 pounds. How many metric tons are in a barge? Uh, that might be how much it weighs. Let's see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the standard, The standard barge capacity is 1,500 tons. So that, yeah, that could carry two of the Baalbek stones. Yes. So you would need a standard barge of today to move, to basically move one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's like the one you would see. Yeah, kind of flowing up and down the river, carrying the coal or whatever you would see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 carries a lot. Um, I don't know. I guess there's just a lot of uh, questions and mystery. I mean, I mean, you said it. I mean, there are these machined rocks. Um, they are heavy. They are machined in several cases. Um, they are cut. Uh, they have drill holes in some cases, and um, it is all done by technology that is. It's one of two things, like you said, it's either extraterrestrial or our civilizations of ancient days of many, many years ago were just more, far more advanced than we can even realize today. I guess that's about sums it up. Right. Well, some some cases and the site too, which is very difficult stone to cut, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, fascinating stuff. Uh, it is okay. I mean, I think we basically gotten to it. I mean, it's uh, um, technology that is really still unknown <laughs> to this day. How some of these uh, rocks could have been moved? It's either again, it's either by ancient civilizations far more advanced than we realize they could be, or it is by technology from other worldly planets. Okay, and, uh, anything else you want to add to this, Eric? Uh, did, 
did you ever wonder let me ask you this one one last question did you ever wonder in school that because i wondered about this I, I even said this this program but i talked about it in the last program when i sat there in school and we were talking about pyramids and there are pyramids in africa and there are pyramids in south america mexico etc but it didn't make sense to me how there were pyramids in two different spots that long ago when these people didn't know each other did that ever kind of raise a red flag with you growing up Yeah, I, I actually said that to myself. I, I kind of said that to myself the other day, um, you know, putting myself back in the shoes of that, of uh, thousands and tens of thousands of years ago. Uh, the thought has just come across my mind, boys. Let's go build a giant pyramid. <laughs> you know, just that alone doesn't make sense. Yeah, for the next 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> Take Henry and Frank down there, and you guys pick up this huge stone. We'll carry it up that up to the river. I throw it in the boat. Okay, Eric. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, Eric, that was a lot of fun. I'll talk to you soon. All right, have a good night. Okay, uh, that is Eric Miller here joining us, building and construction expert. Um, I was tinkering with the audio a little bit during that segment. Nephew Dave was chiming in, giving me some pointers that everything was a little low. Uh, we did have some uh, system reboot here that defaulted some uh, way deep down settings back to some old stuff. So I think everything was definitely a little grainy at first. Uh, go ahead and uh, fast forward first few minutes if you need to replay this again, I guess. Uh, but I think we have all the audio for the most part corrected um, sooner than later in this broadcast. A couple times I was tweaking with the gain uh, throughout. So you might hear some adjusted levels. Uh, just be patient with that. But I think that's all great content that Eric Miller has brought to us tonight. So yeah, I guess uh, um, that's what we learned is that here on season one, episode two, of Inquisition Unknown is that it's very, very difficult to carry stones and rocks that weigh hundreds of tons. And the cuts, the saw cuts, don't make any sense either. All right. Um, we'll have to think of a new topic for next week. Uh, there's many different, definitely different directions we can go. I haven't thought about which one I want to go to yet. Uh, I'll try to find the less controversial subject to where it might be a little bit easier to get a good guest to commit. Uh, so God willing, we will be on here for episode three, season one, next Tuesday. If we need to push that two weeks, I guess that's what we'll do. But we're going to work hard on some guests uh, for that in the meantime. Um, open your eyes, people. Because everything is out there. The ancient civilization of the past constructed by giant stones, some of unknown origin, some from the tops of mountains. The only way to get them there is to fly them off the mountain, cut from the side of the mountain. 
but yes, fascinating. Open your eyes, people. There's a lot of crazy stuff out there, and a lot of it doesn't make sense. And the giant stones of all these sites are the smoking gun that civilization is a little different than what we know in our history books. These ancient cities, ancient civilizations, were either way far more technologically advanced than we have ever thought, or they were the direct influence of extraterrestrials. I'm Steve Murray. This is Inquisition Unknown, Season 1, Episode 2. We look forward to Episode 3. Have a good night.